Hi, this is Chris Glenn back with the latest edition of the Nightlight Podcast, joined on the show by Melvin Vallum Parambil. Nice to have you with us, Melvin. I believe you just got back from Costa Rica. Were you teaching down there? Yes, Chris, it was exciting. Uh, that was a beautiful opportunity for me to be there because uh, we taught at a youth meeting. It was amazing because a lot of these young people, they've been in the church, they've known about about the Lord and, you know, they, they genuinely want to do something for the kingdom of God. So when I started teaching on our identity in Christ, who we really are, compared to the identity that comes from the world, and I was sharing my testimony of how it changed my life. Right. The young people, they really got it. And, you know, some of them, you know, they came back to me the next day. They really was excited to know that there is something more that God has given us than anything that the world can ever offer as far as our identity is concerned. Right. We were on the streets. We were passing out tracks, uh, winning souls, talking to people in the market, bus stops, wherever. I mean, I hadn't done that in that way for a long time. So for me, it was really inspiring to do that, to be on the street and, you know, to be able to meet people individually. Yes. Well, Melvin, what topic have you chosen to teach on the program today? So Chris, I was praying about teaching on the mind of Christ. Reason it is so important for us to walk and think with the mind of Christ is because in a natural human form, with a natural mind, we always tend to identify or think according to the world. Right. I'm not just talking about uh, sins like sex or drinking or none of that. I'm talking about a mind is constantly following a carnal mindset instead of the mind of Christ. Right. So when Jesus died on the cross and when he rose again, this mind was made available to us. When I say that, what I mean is that our recreated spirit thinks with the mind of Christ. He doesn't think outside of the mind of Christ. The Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is of one spirit. So our Recreated spirit, the real us or the real me is my spirit. So I only think with the mind of Christ according to the word of God. But because my carnal mind is not renewed to that level, my carnal mind always leads me into trouble. And so for a long time, I didn't really understand that. So I was trying my best to obey the Lord, keep the commandments in the New Testament by thinking that if I put my willpower and use my willpower, I will be able to do what God wants me to do. Right. And it is true to some extent, I was able to do that, but I was continually on a daily basis bogged down with the carnal mind. And I know the Bible says, you know, David said that, you know, I hate vain thoughts, but thy word do I love. But we have to understand that King David, he didn't have the mind of Christ available to him. That's true. So he had to use his own willpower and cast down thoughts or imaginations or whatever and try to think positive or think godly. But for us, the Lord knows, you know, we are not going to be able to do that on our own. Yes. So he put the same mind that is in Christ Jesus, he put it into our, our recreated spirit. Wow. So now... The Lord wants us to walk with that mind, tap into the mind, to release the mind into our subconscious level where now we are thinking just like Jesus thinks. Now, the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. What that means is as Jesus is now, so are we in the world. So our spirits are exactly as Jesus is. That means we have the same mind that Jesus has right now. Wow. See, God is not going to expect us as his children to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ without giving us the tools to do it. Yes. And one of the main important things for us is the, is the mind of Christ. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yes. So if we are thinking from a religious point of view, if we are thinking from a denominational point of view, we are thinking from something we heard here and there, and we think that is Christianity and that is the way I'm, I'm supposed to think. And so we neglect the mind of Christ, which is in us. So as Christians, when we walk with the mind of Christ, we will be unified. Every denomination will be unified because the mind of Christ will only bring out one doctrine. Like Jesus said, you know, when the spirit of truth shall come, he will teach you 
all things, right? Right. He will lead you into all truth. Inspiring you to draw closer to God. You're listening to Nightlight. So Melvin, you're saying that when we accept Christ and are born again, we are immediately given the mind of Christ, but most people are not aware that they've been given this gift of having the mind of Christ. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yes, there's the mind of Christ. It's right there. Yeah. Now... For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that's in the Old Testament, that he might instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Yes. So it's not that we are going to have the mind of Christ when we go to heaven. We have it right now. Praise God. And that mind of Christ is in our spirit. Our spirit thinks with the mind of Christ. But in our soulish realm, we've been programmed by religious groups and religious uh, teaching and churches and denomination. And so those kind of teachings and the world is constantly programming us to walk by sight and not by faith. So this mind we have to put on. And that is what, you know, the Bible talks about putting on Christ or putting on the new man. Melvin, can I just briefly interrupt you to ask you what you mean by soulish realm? Some of our listeners may not understand what you're referring to when you say soulish realm. Yeah, Chris, uh, we are a three-part being. That is, we are a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. The Bible is very clear about that. Just to clarify, uh, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 5. Now uh, look at verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. So here, Paul is talking about your whole spirit, soul, and body. We preserve blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God did that with our spirit. The day we got born again, our spirits are recreated. Right. It's complete, the Bible says. And he that is joined to the Lord is of one spirit. So we have the same mind in our spirit, but in our soul. Our soul is where our emotions are, where our thinking processes happen our attitudes, our mindset, all of that is a soulish realm. Right. And then we have a physical body that we live in. So every time Paul is talking about us, we are complete. We are made anew. We are born again. He's talking about our spirit. Yes. So we have to put on the same mind in us, in our soul or in a subconscious level out of which are the issues of life, the Bible says. So because we don't do that, if we die right now, we go to heaven with the mind of Christ. But God gave us the mind of Christ while we live on the earth. We can use the mind of Christ and think with the mind of Christ. And that is when all things become possible to him that believeth. Wow. Right? That's when Jesus said, He that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the life that is needed for every aspect of a Christian life comes out of a spirit. That, that belly is the seat of the spirit. It flows out of that. So... A lot of the promises that are in the New Testament, people are not living it, is because we don't think with the mind of Christ. It manifests because of the mind of Christ. Now look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Now, here Paul is saying, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Right? Right. See, we just read that in 2 Corinthians 2, 16. We have the mind of Christ. So Paul is saying we have to put it on. We have to have this mind operating in us daily, continually. Right. See, that's where in Romans 8, the Bible says that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So Jesus said that in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you might have life and that life in abundance. See, he's not talking about the life that we live. We live a natural life. That's not the life he's talking about. He's talking about a life in abundance that we can live right now while we are on this earth. But see, that doesn't happen unless we put on that mind of Christ. Yes. See, out of the mind of Christ flows 
our, our lifestyle. It's nightlife. What a delight. Melvin, I just wanted to ask you, Paul says that we have the mind of Christ, but we also need to put on the mind of Christ. So by putting on, does that mean we need to make a conscious decision to tune out our carnal mind and tune into the mind of Christ, which is already in us? How do we do that? If you look at uh, Ephesians 4, uh, let's go to verse 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yeah, so that is how we put on the mind of Christ. The new man is the mind of Christ. Out of the mind, our lifestyle comes out according to our mindset. And see, that's why in the New Testament, Paul talked so much about the mind. Right. When our subconscious mind, that is the spirit of our mind, is renewed, we can put on the new man, which is already created after God in true righteousness and holiness. But if, if our mind is still carnal, the word carnal means we are walking by sight. Right. That's what it means, not just talking about all the ungodly things people do. Some Christians think, oh, I don't drink, I, have, I don't commit adultery, I don't do this and that, so I'm okay. No, the carnal mind is a mind that is not thinking according to the word of God. It's not believing what God's word says in any area of our life. Right. See, Jesus walked with the mind of his father. He said, you know, I say nothing except what my father tells me to say or the works that I do. It's not I that doeth it, but the father that in me doeth the work. So Jesus, while he was on the earth, he walked with that mind of God and he didn't go outside of it. Even though people tried to pull him outside of it, he constantly stayed with his father's mind. And he was so humble enough to say that it's not I, but Father in me that say the words. See, we need to be in a state where we are saying the same thing. That means it's not, you know, my mind that is thinking, it is the mind of my Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is such a, it's an inheritance that's given to us that's not even given to the angels. This is for us as sons and daughters of God. And yet we struggle and we are begging God, take away this, uh, you know, imagination, take away this, take away that. Well, the Bible says, put it on and you will walk as Jesus walked on the earth. That is how we put on the mind. Now, a subconscious mind is already programmed by the world to walk in the natural. So when we face something, we automatically, you know, fall onto those tracks of thinking and we think along those lines and then we just say a prayer asking God to do something. Right. But... Our prayer in the New Testament is a prayer of thanksgiving. So when I get into a situation where my mind is going on a different tangent or a different track, yes. I just thank the Father. I say, Father, I thank you that I have the mind of Christ. And so, Father, I thank you that I am putting on the mind of Christ and help me to do that. See, that is a prayer in the New Testament. We are thanking God for what he's already given us. Yes. So the more you're conscious of the mind of Christ in your spirit, in you, the more their mind will start to become a reality in our daily life. Right. Now, of course, in 2 Corinthians 10, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, right. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes, that verse is given to us, but a lot of times, we think that, oh, we have to cast down the imagination. We have to bring every thought into obedience. No, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, right? They're mighty through God to the pulling down. So it is the weapons of God that pulls down those strongholds that is in a subconscious mind. And every imagination that tries to exalt itself against the mind of Christ. That's what it means, against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God is the mind of Christ. Right. See, the weapons are given to us. So when you acknowledge you have it, when you believe you have it, and you are persuaded, you embrace it, and then you confess it. See, that is how the mind of Christ starts to become our mind, even in our soul. Yes. That is in a subconscious level. And so when now when you're faced with something like a sickness, your mind knows that with the mind of Christ, the Bible says the life or the spirit that is in you will quicken your mortal body. Oh, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. By his stripes, I am healed. He sent his word and healed me 
and delivered me from all my destruction. See, that is the mind of Christ. That's right. So when I get sick, my mind automatically now goes to what Jesus did for me. And see, when I'm thinking on that, I'm not paying attention or I'm not letting my mind go wacko with fear and worry about what this pain is going to do to me. But I slip into the mind of Christ and look at what the mind of Christ has produced for me. Yes. What did Jesus do for me in this situation? So now my mind is not carnal. Now my mind is spiritual. So the Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You can't have anything else when you're thinking with the mind of Christ. Right. But to be carnally minded, that means we are going by the world's programming. Oh, that pain means this is that, and you have to have a hip replacement, and you have to have cancer removed. All of this, that is a carnal way of thinking because that is the way a natural man thinketh. But even though we have the pain, even if you go to the doctor and the doctor says you have uh, such and such, your mind is stayed on the mind of Christ. So it says, no, the God's word says he sent his word and healed me. So I am the healed. So you keep your mind on what Jesus has done and what is in your spirit. Yes. See, that is how we walk with the mind of Christ. And soon you'll see that the reality of the physical kingdom starts to diminish and the reality of the kingdom of God starts to manifest. But people think, oh, no, if I just keep, uh, you know, praying and praying and begging God, he'll do it. Right. No, God already did it. Mm -hmm. Right? He gave us life. Right. The life eternal. I just finished teaching a class on the life. I mean, it's really amazing that we don't think about the life that is in us. The more we think about the life that is in us, that Jesus died for us to have, the more that life becomes a reality in our body and in our mind. I mean, I'm not saying this to make anyone feel bad, but no Christian, no child of God should be living in depression. Right. No child of God should be thinking, uh, you know, continually being discouraged and downhearted and jealous and upset and angry and gossiping and criticizing and living in strife. No, God did not give us a rebirth or made us new creatures to live in strife and all of that. Yet we do. The reason we do that is because we are still bogged down with a carnal mind. Now, I'm not teaching this class because my mind is now totally renewed to the mind of Christ. No, it's not. But the percentage of my mind that is renewed is working perfectly. Amen. Right? To where I, I am walking in the same life that Jesus died for me to have in those areas. Now, there are other areas of my mind that the Holy Spirit is helping me to get renewed by the Word of God. So more and more, every day, I'm walking a little bit more with the mind of Christ. Wow. Praise God. And that's what the Bible calls about putting on the new man or putting on Christ. I feel all right when I'm listening to Nightlight. Nightlight. You're tuned in to Nightlight. Now let's look at Colossians 1.21, uh, Chris. And you that was sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Yeah. And you that were sometimes alienated, alienated means separated, and you were alien to the things of God and enemies in, in your mind. See, the enmity with God is in your mind. The Bible says, right, the carnal mind is enmity with God in Romans 8, and it cannot be subject to the law of God. So the carnal mind is enmity with God. So here it says that we were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked words, Right? Yet now hath he reconciled us. That means he brought our spirits to be one with him. That's what reconciliation is, to make something the same as the other. Yes. So he has reconciled us in our spirit. We are one now with him. We have the same mind of Christ. But the same reconciliation has to happen in our soul and in our body. That's right. Right? When our bodies start to receive that from our subconscious level, our bodies will not be affected by sickness and disease. Wow. Just like Jesus, when he was on the earth, you know, they, he was not sick or he was not diseased. That's true. He walked in divine health. But see, as Christians, our mind don't go there. We, we think, no, that was Jesus Christ. No, when Jesus was on the earth, he walked as a human being in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's why he said, the works I do, it's not I that do it, it's my Father in me. Right. See, we have the same thing. We are born again with the same Spirit. So now the only difference is 
our mind is not thinking like the way Jesus thought. And that's why the Bible gave us these verses for us to believe that, right? Right. So we were enemies in our mind. See, even if you're born again and you love God and you sing songs to him and you worship him and you might even be serving him, yet our mind can still be in certain areas, enmity with God. Enmity means against the things of God. Not by purposely thinking that way, but by not renewing our mind to the mind of Christ. Right. That means we have the same counsel, the same wisdom that Christ has. We are not begging God to give us wisdom. Right. The same wisdom is in all of us that is in Christ Jesus. But we need to learn to walk in the wisdom that Christ has given us. Uh, Chris, uh, can you read 1 Corinthians 1.30? Sorry, I get excited when I teach on this topic. Go ahead. <laughs> but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Yeah, when you receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says of him, the Father, Christ is made unto us wisdom and sanctification, redemption and righteousness. See that wisdom is in us. Now, of course, in, you know, James talked about anyone that lacketh wisdom, let him ask of God. Yes, that is, you know, we ask of God, but we do have that. So once we know you have it, because James did not teach uh, on the new creation, he was teaching more on a basic level. Right. But when we look at the revelation of the new creation and who we are in Christ Jesus, we know we have the mind of Christ. We know Christ has made wisdom unto us. So we already have the wisdom. If you have the mind of Christ, you have the wisdom. So we are not trying to get God to give us wisdom. We already have it. We are asking God to help it to be released into our subconscious mind. Right. So that now we can walk with the wisdom of God. Greater wisdom than King Solomon had. Wow. This wow. is the, the wisdom of Jesus Christ himself. Not Solomon, not David, not Abraham, not Moses. And yet Christians are praying for God to give them the double anointing of Elijah or Moses or Abraham or David. None of them had the mind of Christ. Not one of them. That's right. You see, Chris, why it's so important for us to understand this? Because as we walk with the mind of Christ, we are going to start fulfilling what Daniel spoke of in chapter 11. They that know their God shall do exploit. We are not just talking about walking in miracles and walking in healing and all of that. Yes, that is also there, but we're going to walk with the wisdom of the ages, the wisdom of Jesus Christ himself. Wow. So when you're faced with any situation, you know what to do. You're not being carnally minded, but you're spiritually minded. Let's look at Romans 8. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Yeah, see, the law of the sin of death, this is a law like a force. I taught on this a whole class. It's on SoundCloud. Now, this law of sin and death is what we were under. From Adam all the way till Jesus rose from the dead, the law of the spirit of life was not available. So we were under the law of sin and death that came from Adam. But the day Jesus rose from the dead, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus was, was made available to every child of God. Wow. And see, that law is what, the law of spirit of life is what set us free from the dark kingdom and from everything that is in the world, that is in the natural, whose God is Satan, according to 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. So even though we are set free, our spirits are set free from the law of sin and death, yet if we start thinking according to the carnal mind, then that becomes our reality. Now look at verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And 5. For they that are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Yeah, so even though we in our spirit, we are born again, Jesus fulfilled the law and we entered into his obedience and that's why we are not under the law anymore. Yes. But in a soulish realm, as we put on the mind of Christ and we walk with the mind of Christ, then even in the flesh, we will start to fulfill 
whatever the Old Testament required the Jews to fulfill, right? Right. That means we don't have to fulfill the law to get saved or anything. We don't have to fulfill the law because we are not under the law, we are under grace. Yes. But as we walk with the mind of Christ, everything that God ever said for man to do, we will be doing it because it's not us who's doing it, it is through the mind of Christ. Right. And see, that's what it's talking about. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh or the carnal mind, but after the spirit, which is the mind of Christ. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. You see, it all starts with the mind. Right. And that's why we are so carnally minded. That's why we are so naturally minded. Yes. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. See, that is the mind of Christ. You can't have the things of the spirit without the mind of Christ. They are one. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. See, the lust of the flesh can only be conquered by us putting on the mind of Christ. Right. Otherwise, right. we might be good in one area, but fall in the other area because the flesh is always trying to dominate our thinking. And of course, the next verse says, because the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. See, it is talking about the mind. So that is why it's so important for us to understand what is this mind of Christ. I, I, I don't have the mind of Christ because I'm a missionary or I take Bible classes or, you know, I did this or I did that. You cannot get the mind of Christ by doing anything. Right. It's not like some of the sadhus in India, they go up to the Himalayas and try to be like Buddha by meditating and trying to get something Buddha had. Right. No, no, no. This is, we can't get the mind of Christ by anything we can do. We, get, we already got the mind of Christ as a gift. Let this mind be in you. We have the mind of Christ. But the desire to walk in the mind of Christ is what the Holy Spirit is looking for. That's right. When you start knowing that, you know, I hate vain thoughts, but thy word do I love. Let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, and my Redeemer. See, that's the desire we create. That's the desire God put in us. I want to walk with the mind of Christ. I don't want to walk with a natural mind. See, you hate it. See, when you come to that place where you hate your carnal thinking, your carnal mind, that is always teaching us to walk by sight and not by faith. Yes. See, God cannot tell us that, uh, you know, the just shall live by faith. God can't tell that unless he gave us the mind of Christ to walk in faith. See, walking in the mind of Christ is walking by faith. You can't walk by faith and not put on the mind of Christ in that area. Right. Right. Some pastors, they have, you know, the gift of healing or whatever. They pray for people, they get healed. So in that area, their mind is renewed to that. If they pray for somebody with the name of Jesus, they get healed. So they go forth and that person gets healed. But the rest of their mind, they're still walking in the carnal. See, so, but a lot of times as Christians, we look at the miracles and say, oh, that's a man of God. Oh, that no, no. This is the whole fullness of Christ. The Bible is talking about us, us walking in the fullness of Christ, not just in one area. Yes. So I'm not just looking for miracles, you know, okay, I have to, even though I pray for people, they get healed. Sometimes they don't. I still get to pray for them and I see more healing. Or I pray for somebody who's possessed and they, the, the spirit leaves them and they get delivered. I'm not looking for that. I know as I put on the mind of Christ, that is a byproduct. That's the result. It will automatically come. I don't have to go looking to do miracles. Right. Wherever I am, that is my reality. And so, see, that is what it is. That is what the mind of Christ is. So, people think, oh, if I pray so many times, and if I go to church, or if I sing songs to Jesus for one hour, then I am with the mind of Christ. No, that's good. We need to worship the Lord. We need to sing. All of that is good, but they're on an elementary level. God wants us to move on from there where we are walking with the mind of Christ continually from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed. Wow. And it's not the work of the flesh like we read in 1 Thessalonians 5. He is faithful. He will complete it. He is the one that is faithful. He shall do it. But he requires our desire. He wants us to desire it. He wants us to think on it. Father, I want to walk with the mind of Christ. Yes. And see, that's what I, I pray every day. From the time I wake up, it's like, Father, I don't want that mindset. That mindset has caused so much trouble in my life. I don't want that. I want the mind of Christ. See, the more I recognize it, I, I am persuaded by that. I embrace it. And when I start to confess it, it starts to become a reality. Yes. 
But there is no condemnation if we are not yet walking in the mind of Christ. There is no condemnation because we are all learning. Nobody has arrived. We are all learning, but the goal is we have to start somewhere in order to learn. See, that somewhere is your desire. Now you know from God's word that God wants us to walk with the mind of Christ, to put on the new man. And, you know, the Bible talks about it in different places. Look at Colossians 1.10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Yeah. See, when people read that verse, the Christians who are performance-based, that means their mind is always going to, oh, I have to do this in order for God to do that. When they, when they see that, they say, oh, I have to walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. So they try to do that in the flesh with their own carnal mind, with their own willpower. Right. And now they become self-righteous. They start to judge others because they think I'm walking worthy. Yes. No, this word walking worthy of the Lord is with the mind of Christ. Being fruitful in every good work. You can't be fruitful in every good work with your own willpower. See, God has made us worthy. So the Bible is saying now walk in that worthiness. I'm complete in him. I am the righteousness of God. I have the same wisdom. I have the same holiness, the true holiness. See, I am made worthy by the blood of Christ in my spirit. So now the Bible is saying walk worthy with that same worthiness we have. We need to start walking and then we become fruitful in every good work. How? And increasing in the knowledge of God. See that increasing in the knowledge of God is increasing in the mind of Christ in your soul. And that's what makes us walk worthy. Now look at the second part of verse 9. And to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Yeah, see that desire. See, that desire is what I'm talking about. That you might be filled, right? So Paul was desiring that and he's saying we should desire that too. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is given to us. We already have it in our spirit. So when you increase in that knowledge, it says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. So it's a process. As we increase in the knowledge, that means our mind is renewed to that knowledge. Now we start to walk more with the mind of Christ. And as we walk more in the mind of Christ, we increase more in the knowledge. So it's like a continuous process. Right. And now we are walking more and more with the mind of Christ. Chris, if I'm mind, subconscious mind is not renewed to the mind of Christ, then it is getting renewed to the mind of the world. Yes. And that's where fear, worry, anxiety, hatred, envy, strife. That's right. You know how many Christians live in the world continually in those things, one or the other. And yet they all love God. They love Jesus. They're waiting for his second coming. But we are not just waiting for his coming. We are waiting to walk as sons of God, so that we can show the world what Christ really is. Amen. Not just forgiveness of sins and one day you go to heaven. No, that they also can walk with the same power, authority, with the same mind of God. But we as Christians, as God's children, if we don't desire that, see, once we desire that the Holy Spirit start to work, and now you will see an increased desire to study on the new creation. You start desiring to speak in tongues because the Bible says when you do that, you're built up into the most holy faith. Yes. See, those things come because you desire to walk with the mind of Christ. And that's what uh, Romans 12, 2 says. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. See, the reason we are not conformed to the world is because we are walking with the mind of Christ. Now our mind is renewed, our subconscious mind is renewed so that we have the transformation from our spirit to our soul and also into our body. That is when we walk in divine health in our body. See, the transfer doesn't happen unless our mind is renewed away from the corruption that is in the world. And now we are putting on the nature of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the mind of Christ. Right. See, when I say I love Jesus, means I love the mind of Christ. Not just Jesus as a person, but also the mind of Christ. Because we are not putting on the body of Christ right now. 
we will have the same body when Jesus comes back. Praise God. Right? We are going to be transformed into that same glorious body. But right now, we can put on the mind and that mind is what produces that reality of the kingdom of God in our daily life. Otherwise, as Christians, we are still going to live a carnal Christian life with everything that the devil throws at us. We are going to drown in it, struggling to keep our heads above emotionally, physically, financially. It's because we are struggling to somehow get God to do something on our behalf instead of believing what we have and walking in it by getting our mind renewed to it. You're right. It's nightlight. So that is like a very short part of <laughs> that class. But Chris, uh, I, I thought two classes on this on SoundCloud or if somebody wants to go deeper. Yes, we can put the links below to those two classes on SoundCloud. Yes. I mean, that is, uh, you know, along with that, I also taught two classes on As a Man Thinketh in His Heart. Those four classes is enough for us to have the desire to walk in it. And again, Chris, it is not a one-time thing. It is a continuous process of us believing that the mind of Christ is in us and we can walk in it. That's all God requires from us. He'll do the rest. He'll do the rest. Any questions? Melvin, also as you study and meditate on God's word, that also will strengthen you and connect you to the mind of Christ through meditating on God's word, right? Yes, the word of God is the mind of Christ. Sometimes when we look at the Word of God, generally, people go, you know, to different books in the Old Testament or wherever, and they think, okay, that is the time I need. No, you've got to be focused on what area of the mind of Christ you're putting on. And see, that is the area that you're spending your time studying. Right. Not just anything. Of course, everything is the Word of God. But, you know, Jesus said you can't take a piece of, yeah, a new piece of cloth and try to put it on an old garment you know, it will make it worse. So you got to stick with who you are in Christ Jesus. And then as you meditate on that, that is what you are going to grow into. Yes. In 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, it says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So Chris, what it means here, what this verse is saying is that as we behold in the glass, that is the word of God, the glory of the Lord that is in our spirit are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even by the Holy Spirit. Yes. See, that's what we are doing. We are looking in the word to see who we are in Christ Jesus. And as we behold in the word, who we are in Christ Jesus, we are changed into that same image in our daily life, in our soul, in our body. Wow. From glory to glory, that means it is a process from manifestation to manifestation. But the Holy Spirit is the one who does it. So the transformation is done through the Holy Spirit, but we need to behold and desire it. See, the glory of the Lord is the mind of Christ. Everything flows out of the mind of Christ. But as you know, of course, you can read the rest of the Bible and it will be interesting and exciting. But the, the mind renewal we are talking about here is the mind of Christ, which we have in the writings of Paul and Peter and John. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight, shining God's love light to the world. And thank you so much, Melvin. And listeners, if you visit Melvin's SoundCloud page, you'll find there 80 or more of his classes with new classes being added all the time. And these classes can be downloaded. So if you enjoy Melvin's teachings, I highly recommend that you subscribe to his SoundCloud page. But that's it for now. I pray this teaching has been a blessing to you. And this is Chris Glynn signing off, and I'll be back again soon with another Nightlight podcast. Bye for now.